morning, everyone. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills, and yes, it is still morning, and I'm uh, going through these pretty quick. I actually prefer them dry over rehydrated. <laughs> and I had Mark taste one, and he was, wow, over the texture. He didn't dislike it, but he did think it was rather strange, and of course it is initially. It takes a bit of an adjustment to uh, eat strawberries that are bone dry when you're accustomed to eating them nice and juicy. <laughs> so, anyway, by now, everyone has heard about the attack on Israel from Iran. And I understand that there were over 300 drones and missiles that were headed to Israel, and most of them were deflected. I think 99% of them were deflected. I think the odd one uh, did hit ground. Uh, nobody died, but there was a young child, um, seven-year-old, that was seriously injured from shrapnel, and apparently she is fighting for her life. So, all in all, a uh, very good defense, seeing as what was um, headed their way. And my personal belief is that this is just the beginning. I don't think that Israel can stand down and just take this and say, okay, um, we hit two of your guys and uh, you lobbied over 300 um, missiles and drones at us and uh, we'll call it even. No, I don't think it's going to go that way. And they still have they still have a whole bunch of Israeli hostages. They still have American hostages. And from what I hear, the U.S. did assist in defensive measures, and, but they will not assist in offensive measures. And, well, that's fine. They choose to go that route. That's what they're going to do. Uh, I don't think that Iran can win a war against Israel, but um, having, and that was my concern, having uh, a attacks come from multiple directions at the same time can be uh, very difficult for anybody to deal with on an ongoing basis, let alone Israel. And they've already been uh, fighting for, what, six months now? So at this point we have Ukraine and Russia. Uh, with a non-stop, what is it, two-year war at this point. Now we have Israel and uh, Iran and their subsidiaries or whoever, you know, Hezbollah and uh, Hamas and Hutututis or whatever they're called, all of them fighting Israel. So that area is a powder keg and uh, it, I don't see that doing anything but expanding um, hopefully with cooler minds um, in neighboring countries, uh, they, they will not get involved on either one side or the other, but uh, time will tell. Now if I bring up the fact that we have all these issues going on, it's to reiterate over and over again that we must prepare here locally for increased food prices and increased housing, you know, perhaps a couple of families have to get together under one roof in order to be able to survive today and, well, that's better than uh, suffering. Uh, I know it's not the ideal. We are accustomed to all having our own space and all of that, but uh, w with a little bit of uh, ingenuity and a little bit of kindness <laughs> and a little bit of gi giving each other space, even that can work. Yes, um, sharing chores and sharing uh, everything could help to get you through some really tough times. And I don't really see things getting any easier until this whole year has passed. 
There, there is a lot of power play going on in the world right now. There is a lot of elections in a lot of different countries. There is a lot of uh, people rising and a lot of people falling. And uh, leaders don't, I still don't understand why the thirst, I guess you could call it, for power and then not being able to properly address it and make your population happy. You know, they, they want power so bad and then the population is not pleased with the uh, what they are <laughs> made to live with and what do they do? They just abuse them rather than trying to uh, um, better people's lives. They, they beat them and they starve them and they jail them and they do whatever they can to turn around and say, well, no, you've got to do it my way, and I don't really care if you don't like it. And there's just so much of that going on in the world right now. And the best we can do is do our best to look after ourselves. Uh, I highly recommend that uh, you continue to um, preserve food in whatever manner you are capable of. They all work to some degree. They all work, you know, if, if if one method doesn't work for one type of food, another one does. And I find that not all methods work for all foods. I've got this lovely freeze dryer today, and that is my new toy. A lot of people think it's in my new toy. It is a new toy. It is something that I've been experimenting with, and there is things that I'd like to produce with that, and that is ready-made ready meals. Now I could also make ready-made meals in a jar. And I have made chili, and I have made, uh, you, know, you can make stew, you know, can up a jar of stew and just open it up and warm it up and eat it. The thing is that I recognize that canned foods are usually best before three years, whereas the freeze-dried is supposed to last for 25 years, and I think that is if it's freeze-dried properly and then if it's stored properly, like everything else. Uh, there are methods to everything, but canning is very popular so you can and not terribly expensive to do once you've got your canner once you've got your jars it's just a matter of putting up food as much as you can and you can either a uh, water bath can or pressure can based on the food that you're putting up and you know, not all foods can be water bath canned and not all foods need to be pressure canned there is also Dehydrating and dehydrating works. I find that it works best with some foods and not with others, just like anything else. Um, uh, even canning, uh, there are some foods I don't like canned. I think I've said it a few times uh, in some videos that uh, rutabagas, I absolutely detest canned. Um, it just, they turn out bitter and awful. It really changes the flavor. In most foods, it doesn't change the flavor that much, but uh, with rutabagas, it's just terrible. So I don't can rutabaga anymore. I will blanch and freeze, and that is something else you can do if you have a freezer. Certainly, you can blanch and freeze almost anything. And you can vacuum seal and freeze, and that keeps food good for much longer. And, of course, there is, uh, as I said, there is dehydrating. You can dehydrate and then <clears throat> vacuum seal a lot of food. Things like flour and cornmeal, I like to put in brown paper bags and put a label in there and then or on the outside of the brown paper bag and then put that all in a vacuum seal bag and vacuum seal it. So I've got it dated and I, I know what's in it because you can't see through a brown paper bag. But I find that the flour um, is perfectly good. When I open it up, even after a year, I've you know started to open some that I put away for a year and a half now, and they smell fresh. I'm very happy with that result. Um, you can um, ferment some foods, and uh, some people like a lot of fermented foods, and others don't. I prefer to do sauerkraut and pickles fermented and I've made fermented beans and those came out really good. 
Now, if you don't want to go through all that trouble, you can still buy canned food. You can buy frozen food. You don't have to go through all that work if you don't have the time or the means or the inclination. Personally, I do not buy very much canned goods at all because I think I can can it myself for uh, a much uh, cheaper price. Like a can of beans or at a, at a dollar, dollar and a half per can. Hmm. I can do it a lot cheaper than that. So I personally like to can up my own beans and corn and um, chickpeas and things of that nature. And I always have some of those handy in, in my pantry. But folks, whatever it takes, whatever you can do, whatever you can put up is probably very crucial that you look at that much more so right now. The way the world is going, and, and I mention it because things aren't going to get any better. Prices are going to just get higher. Uh, farmers are still struggling. I've, I heard that farmers in Quebec are now um, protesting. And for, I mean, Quebec is very good at protesting and probably uh, our Prime Minister listens to Quebec before he listens to any other province. But still, to have the farmers in Quebec protest, that means they, they are not happy. Something's going on that's just, they're not happy with the situation. And um, farmers are still protesting right across the world. Things have to change. Our farmers do have to be supported first and foremost. They feed us. And uh, we have to do our level best to try and you know grow as much food as we can ourselves. And if we can't, just uh, buy and stock up for a rainy day because that rainy day is going to come. We don't know how long it'll last, but it's going to come. Anyway, um, not to make anyone concerned or upset or fearful. Perhaps my purpose is just to encourage you to do what you can to uh, be as self-sufficient as possible and to make sure that you have stores for as long as you can possibly put them up. If it's only two weeks, it's only two weeks. If it's a year, great. If it's 20 years, fine. I personally probably would never need, I don't think I'll be around 20 years from now, but you never know. <laughs> so, and not only that, if I can put up food for that long, maybe I can assist my children. So anything that you can do uh, to make sure that you don't go hungry is imperative right now because the cost of things are not going down. They're not going down. And uh, we don't know how bad it's going to get. Anyway, this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. Look after yourself, folks.